So you just received the battery preconditioning update on your 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5 or Kia EV6, or you just wanna know a little bit more about it and how it works. Well, today I'm gonna to show you exactly how it works here in this 2023 Hyundai Ioniq 5. So if you're an owner of these vehicles or are familiar with them and are interested in purchasing one, then you'll know the 2022 models, at least most of them, did not come from the factory with the battery preconditioning system. Well, Hyundai and Kia have recently released a dealership update to update the software of the vehicle to allow this functionality only on all-wheel drive vehicles. Now here I am sitting in a 2023 Ionic 5 and this one has it from the factory. Now all 2023 models, both all wheel drive and rear wheel drive will come from the factory. So you don't have to worry about getting an update or anything if you have a 2023 or newer. And certain late 2022 builds also came from the factory with this functionality. Uh, so just keep that in mind. The update only applies to earlier 2022s. Again, only in all wheel drive. So starting out with the criteria that needs to be met to use this functionality on your EV. The first one is the battery needs to be below 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius. If the battery is at or above this temperature, then it will not need to use the battery preconditioning system because it's already at optimal temperatures for DC fast charging. The second one is the battery needs to be above 20% state of charge. So Hyundai has kind of chosen 20% as the threshold or cutoff to stop using the preconditioning as it does use a little bit of extra energy to kind of heat the battery up, especially in very cold conditions. Uh, however, some people might think a lower threshold is beneficial. However, you cannot change this as of right now. So 20% is the cutoff as to whether or not the battery preconditioning system will actually function or not. Next, you have to use the onboard built-in navigation system for the vehicle to set a destination and then a waypoint using the POI or points of interest integrated into the system itself. So you cannot use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay in conjunction with the system as the car's infotainment kind of controls whether or not the preconditioning function will start and kind of when it happens. Now you can either set the DC fast charger as the point of interest final destination, or you can set it as a waypoint on a farther destination which has multiple stops, and this will also precondition the battery for each additional stop. Now once the POI or point of interest is set for the DC fast charger, the system will precondition the battery system either about 30 to 35 miles out or about 30 minutes out, depending on your speeds, travel times, type of roadways you're on and stuff like that. So the car will kind of dictate when to start the preconditioning process, but it'll either be about 30 to 35 miles out from your DC fast charger or about 30 minutes. Now, once the car starts the process, there'll be a little message that pops up at the bottom of the 12.3 inch digital cluster. And there'll also be a little icon that appears inside of the battery indicator on the lower left-hand side of the vehicle. This will either be a little snowflake icon or a little red coil, depending on which software version you're running and which model your car you have as well. Most people seem to have the red coil icon, but some with the update for the 2022 cars have a little snowflake icon. So now that we have some of the criteria and kind of the methods to actually use the battery preconditioning system, I wanna show you exactly how to set it in the built-in infotainment system, as well as some tricks and tips if you also live near a DC fast charger or kind of frequent one particular charging station to add it for the favorites on your infotainment system. So the first scenario I wanna show you is adding a destination on the infotainment and then adding a waypoint as a point of interest for your DC fast charger on the way to the final destination. Navigate to Mall of America. So on the screen, you can click Route Options, and this will take you to a screen where you can add an additional waypoint, because obviously there's not enough charge or range on this particular EV to reach the final destination. So if you hit OK, and then go down at the bottom and hit Add Waypoint, this will allow you to search for a point of interest here on the waypoint. So if you hit Add Waypoint, Go to POI categories, not search, EV charging stations. This will bring up a list of compatible DC fast chargers on your particular route. Now here on the left side, you can see you can do a long route near current position or near destination. Now you can see a couple of the DC fast chargers that show up are actually less than 30 miles away on the particular route. So in theory, if I were to select one of these, which I will demonstrate, the car should start the preconditioning process before I even leave my current position. So I'll go ahead and select one of the DC fast chargers here, hit OK. It has added it to the waypoint on the way to your final destination. We can go ahead and hit calculate. Start guidance. 
Then it may take a minute or two to start the process on the vehicle for the preconditioning, but you should see it pull up here in the digital gauge cluster along with the little battery icon in the lower corner of the screen. And there you can see the battery preconditioning is activated for optimal DC fast charge. And it looks on this particular car, we do have the red coil icon in the little battery symbol down the lower left-hand corner. So I'm gonna cancel this route and show you a different method as to activating the battery preconditioning system if you wanna use the final destination as the DC fast charger. So if we go back to the navigation menu, go back to the POI categories, EV charging stations, and you can see there's many that are fairly close by. We'll go ahead and use this Electrify America station just under 15 miles away, set as the destination. Start guidance. And since this destination is less than 30 miles away, this should also activate the DC fast charging battery preconditioning system immediately. And there you can see the battery preconditioning is active with the little red coil symbol. So lastly, I wanna show you how to save kind of a local DC fast charge station as a favorite in case you kind of wanna use that station and you live within 30 minutes or 30 miles from that station and kind of just wanna use the battery preconditioning system on a daily basis uh, to kind of precondition the battery system without leaving your current position. So obviously you wanna go back to the navigation menu. At the bottom, you can add a few favorites. So we'll go ahead and add favorite one, POI category, EV charging stations, and here's the same one I just used, just over 15 miles away, hit okay. So you can see it's been added as favorite one at the bottom of the screen, so anytime you're within 30 miles or 30 minutes of this destination, it'll go ahead and start the preconditioning process for faster DC charging in colder weather. And this is also a nice shortcut way to preconditioning the battery system, no matter which DC fast charger you're using, as long as you select one that is local to you within 30 miles. Uh, so you can basically start the vehicle, immediately start preconditioning the battery, and then by the time you arrive at a DC fast charger, hopefully the battery is at a warmer or optimal temperature to get the faster charging speeds. So now the battery preconditioning process is active. I wanna show you a way you can verify uh, without any sort of OBD2 port scanner uh, that it is functioning. So if we go into EV menus up here, we'll go to energy information. We'll go into electricity use. And under battery care, you can see it's currently pulling 5.6 kilowatts of energy through the battery. So that is a way to verify that it is indeed functioning so again, if you divide this by 30 minutes or about the average runtime of the battery preconditioning system, uh, this will use about two to four kilowatts depending on how cold the ambient temperature and the battery pack is. Uh, so it's really not a huge pull of energy from the battery pack. However, just know if you let it run for one hour, that would use about five and a half kilowatts of energy. So if we go ahead and cancel the route, cancel route. And now you can see immediately once the route is canceled, the battery care, zero kilowatts are being pulled from it. And most of it is going from the electronics and the climate control. So that's an easy way without an OBD2 port scanner to see that the battery preconditioning system is indeed functioning. So now hopefully you guys better understand how to use the battery preconditioning system and how it functions in your Ionic 5 or Kia EV6. Now I wanna give a huge thanks to the Ionic guy on YouTube for his more in-depth detailed video. I just wanna create this shorter video for anybody that's kind of just searching really quickly, uh, might be looking for the very first time on a road trip or uh, looking at how to operate their car for the first time. Uh, this is kind of a condensed version of his video. If you want a little bit more detail and a little bit more uh, real world usage with it, I would highly recommend checking out his video uh, here on YouTube once again. So I think one of the biggest issues I have, he has, and I think a lot of other Ionic or EV6 owners have in general, is the fact that this implementation is nowhere near as simplistic or comprehensive as something like Tesla's system where you can simply input a final destination into the UI. It will plan out, map all of your charging stops, approximately how long you will be at each stop, and basically plan your route without having to think about it or plan ahead. Now here with Hyundai's implementation of the battery preconditioning system, this is a little bit more cumbersome to use. Uh, you have to kind of plan out each charging stop. Now, if you are traveling, say across the country once again, the way the POI works here in this head unit 
is that it searches near your current position, near the destination, but not very well in between your two points. So say you have 230 miles of range on your Ionic 5, and the POIs only go out to 100 miles. Well, obviously you're not gonna stop 100 miles short of your range uh, where you would normally need to stop to charge. So that's kind of where Hyundai system falls flat and you have to kind of work around the system and uh, do a bunch of planning ahead of time uh, to make sure you're gonna be charging and kind of stopping in the correct uh, optimal conditions to charge your battery at a DC fast charger. So that's kind of why I think a lot of people don't like this implementation is that it's not as kind of comprehensive as some of the competitors on the market. So hopefully in the future, it'll get a little bit better. Hyundai can figure out a way to input your final destination. It can do your route planning along with your DC fast charging stops and just overall plan your route as a whole rather than you having to add waypoints, uh, hoping they're correct, hoping the chargers are actually available and uh, basically everything like that because obviously Tesla has a vertical integration. They control the charging structure. They control the vehicles themselves, the software, basically everything within a Tesla they have a lot of control over. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please hit that like button below as always. Make sure to check out some of the other videos here in this Ionic 5 series that I'm doing as I will be driving the Ionic 5 for a week or so, living with it on a daily basis and showing you that you can live off 110 outlet charging uh, if you have a certain level of commute. So I highly recommend checking out some of the other videos that I have here in this Ionic series. I'll have a playlist here on the channel, so make sure to check it out. So once again, I appreciate the support, and as always, hope to see you guys in the next one.